Every day, our youth are engaging in opportunities to connect face-to-face -face and online. Helping them appropriately navigate these opportunities can help combat bullying, cyberbullying, and foster safe and healthy learning environments. I'm here to share information with you today about new legislation that addresses how bullying and cyberbullying are defined and what requirements and options there are for schools. In 2017, the 85th Texas Legislature passed SB 179, which amended current laws related to bullying in the Texas Education Code. The bill, named David's Law, revised the definition of bullying and identified prevention and intervention expectations and reporting procedures for schools in Texas. David's Law also includes specific language to address and define cyberbullying, school reporting requirements to law enforcement, and injunctive measures regarding targeted bullying and cyberbullying. Identifying acts of bullying is important because schools by Texas law are afforded the opportunity to provide options for conflict resolution or disciplinary placement in an effort to protect students if an act or pattern of acts meets the definition of bullying. Schools must first identify an incident or a series of incidents as bullying in order to determine the best course of action for resolution. It's important to know that just because an act does not meet the definition of bullying, it does not necessarily mean the school cannot take any action. An act may be classified as harassment or assault and warrant intervention. Counseling options and other interventions are an important consideration regardless of the outcome of a report. Let's use the following checklist available on the Texas School Safety Center website to determine if an action or actions meet the definition of bullying under Texas Education Code 37.0832. If a section in the checklist receives at least one check mark, continue down the checklist, carefully considering each area in your investigation. If a section does not receive at least one check, then the action is not technically considered bullying according to current Texas law. The first question that should be asked is, is the action a single significant act or a pattern of acts? A single significant act could be contingent or dependent on the severity or pervasive effect it has on the victim or target of bullying. Next ask, is the action by one or more students directed at another student and does that action exploit an imbalance of power? The significance of this determination is that the acts must be student versus student and the actions must be directed at an individual student. An imbalance of power is a subjective determination and can include physical, social, or emotional threats to a student's well-being. Power imbalances can change over time and in different situations even if they involve the same students. Then question how the action was conducted. The bullying must be done by written, verbal, physical, or electronic means. If bullying is being expressed through electronic means, it may fall under the definition of cyberbullying if it involves any sort of electronic communication. For this next section, the resulting action must answer at least one of the next questions in order to potentially be considered bullying. Has the victim or their property been physically harmed, or does the victim have a reasonable fear of harm to themselves or their property? Is the action or threat sufficiently severe, persistent, or pervasive enough that it creates an intimidating, threatening, or abusive educational environment? Did the action materially or substantially disrupt the educational process or operation of the school? Did the alleged bully infringe on the rights of the victim at school. If any of these questions are true, continue down the checklist. Was the act committed using a phone, computer, email, text messaging, or other electronic communication device? If not, the action should then be evaluated based on whether it occurred on school property, on school transportation, or at a school-related activity. If an electronic communication device was used on school property, the school continues to have authority to address it as bullying. If the action occurred off campus, 
The school now has the expanded authority to address it as cyberbullying if it infringes on the rights of the victim at school or substantially disrupts the educational process. The key term to consider here is whether or not the action infringes on the rights of the victim at school or substantially disrupts the educational process or the orderly operation of a classroom or school. If the school determines the action meets these criteria, the school has the ability to intercede and cooperate with local law enforcement to help ensure safety for all affected students. Schools and school districts have several mandates under Texas Education Code, Chapter 37.0832. Schools must prohibit bullying with an expectation that a district shall adopt a policy, including necessary procedures determined by the district, that prohibits bullying, including cyberbullying. Schools must notify the parents of the alleged victims of bullying within three working days. This was amended by the 85th legislature from a reasonable amount of time to on or before the third business day after the date the incident was reported. Schools must also notify the parents of the alleged bully within a reasonable amount of time. The time notification has remained unchanged for this mandate. Schools must establish a system for anonymous reporting of bullying. Parents and staff members may report bullying as well, but SB 179 specifically states that there must be at least one avenue of reporting for students that is completely anonymous. Schools must prohibit retaliation against anyone who, in good faith, provides information about bullying. Schools cannot discipline a victim of bullying for using self-defense. Schools must establish actions students should take to get help concerning bullying. This includes establishing counseling options for victims and bullies. The school may establish a policy for assisting in the prevention of bullying and mediation of bullying incidents between students. The disciplinary response to bullying of a student with disabilities must comply with federal law. The district's bullying prevention policy must be included in the school district's handbook and in the district improvement plan. And finally, the district's bullying reporting procedure must be posted on the district's internet website. If an action has been determined to be bullying, several disciplinary options are available to schools. Schools may move the identified bully or victim to another class or school, giving careful consideration of each situation and the results of removal from campus. Schools may report the bullying behavior to school-based law enforcement, local law enforcement, or a local municipality for potential assault or harassment charges if the bullying is found to be a punishable offense under Texas Penal Code 22.01. Victims of bullying who are a minor may seek a restraining order or injunctive relief against the student who engages in bullying behaviors. The victim may also have an injunction filed against the bully's parents to require the parents of a bully to take definitive and appropriate action to stop the bully's behaviors. If the identified bully encourages the victim to commit or attempt to commit suicide, incites violence against a student through group bullying, or if the bully releases or threatens to release intimate visual material of the victim, then the bully may be placed into alternative disciplinary education setting and or expelled. Also, schools should remember to report any intimate visual material of a minor if discovered as it relates to Texas Penal Code 22.01. In addition to a school counselor's responsibilities, the counselor will serve as an impartial, non-reporting resource for conflict resolution involving two or more students including accusations of bullying. This role will not exempt a school counselor from any mandatory reporting requirements imposed by other provisions of the law. As counselors, we're here to help students be successful in their learning environments and help them practice healthy social-emotional skills while in the school setting. Through conflict resolution activities and other effective interventions, school counselors can make a significant contribution to the safe climate and culture of the school campus. Ideally, the outcome of any bullying or cyberbullying investigation is that students ultimately learn and utilize healthy social emotional behaviors and digital citizenship skills as they grow in our Texas schools. The Texas School Safety Center is committed to helping our schools and all students stay safe and secure so that they may all excel academically, physically, socially, and emotionally on their way to becoming the strong Texans of tomorrow. 
For more information, feel free to contact the Texas School Safety Center. Thank you.